what do you want to select? Um, so from here, we can basically say a couple of things. Well, what's the actual length, the minimum length of the text that we want? Um, what's the maximum length that we need to do as well? So the min length, so the len min, the minimum length, uh, the length maximum, uh, the table index, the chain length, the chain number, and the part index. Now, as I said before, I'm not gonna get into the whole details of the chain number sequences and how many of them consist of X, Y, Z and how many part indexes consist of the, of the actual character length of the character set. Um, basically, these are all individual characteristics that we can actually um, enhance uh, the algorithm that we sort of spit out. So with a chain length minimum, uh, so once we know, like, like I said before is, once we know what the actual character length of the password policy may be, uh, it makes it easier for us to then go ahead and generate a rainbow table. So in this case, we know that uh, we saw before in Windows Server, in, in the Windows Server, I went into the group policy management, and under there we had the password length of, I think it was one character. So it doesn't mean that the entire complexity of those passwords is one character, but if I'm an admin and then I say, cool, I want a minimum length of six characters, but a maximum of 10, we're not gonna know that doing an attack of this some sort. But once we get access to that domain controller, we then can actually look at the security policy or the password policy specifically and go, cool, what is that password policy entailing? And then can I then generate a rainbow table to go ahead uh, and then crack those credentials? Uh, in, a, in most cases, that's what we're gonna do. So um, in this example right now, it's saying, well, give me those parameters and then I'll go ahead and generate a rainbow table specific for these characters. So you'll see when we do the graphical version of this, the benchmark, how it will actually show you the, um, the success rate of, you know, the more specific you are, the higher chance it is of, of, obvious, is of obviously cracking that um, those credentials. So uh, in this case, I'm doing uh, a mixed alpha character set. Um, the plain text minimum length I want um, was I think three. The maximum I'm going to do is four. Um, uh, what's next? So the length minimum, length maximum, the table index. Uh, I think the table index, I don't need to worry about that for now. Um, the chain length, I'll keep it as 3800. I'm not going into the details. Uh, if you guys want me to go talk uh, about these individual parameters, these weighing systems, I can, um, but I'm just not going to do that right now. Um, and then I'll talk about the chain number, which is three, and then the part index, which I don't care about, is zero as well. So I should press enter on there, and then they should go ahead and generate my rainbow table. Okay. Whoops. There you go. So that's now being generated. So that was really quick. Um, it's basically done. And it says, hey, your rainbow table, uh, NTLM mix alpha 3-4 blah, 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 dot RT has been completed. Uh, the algorithm is NTLM, which is the algorithm, which is a Windows hash algorithm. Uh, the length is 16. It's a mixed character alpha set, which entails these parameters, right? Um, the next part is obviously the data in hexadecimal value. Uh, the character length, which is 52, which we didn't specify, that's fine. Uh, the, the length range, so we did a minimum of three characters to four being the maximum. So these are characters saying one, two, three, four. So a minimum of three, so it will go one, two, and three. So anything between three and four, it'll start creating hashes for. Um, so if I do a DIR here, we should be able to see our, there we go. So there's our rainbow table and that's been generated. Okay, so if I go back, uh, where are we? So we're here, back at directory. Um, I'm just gonna go into the graphical version now to show you the difference as well. Um, and I'm gonna fire up WinRTGen, so I'm just gonna cd into that directory. So change directory into WinRTGen, and I'm gonna do it, whoops, DIR, show me what I've got, and it says, hey, you can run WinRTGen. So let's just run with our TGEN. Let's just run it from here. Turn our TGEN and it's not there. Uh, 
All right, I'm just going to re extract it. No, that's what I wanted, which is the exe. And I should have. So right now is how we'll generate it. So if you look at when I teach you an explosion 2.9 by MAO, and MAO was the creator of this, basically laughing my uh, ASS off. Um, that's what it's called, laughing, right? Um, so they're the guys that created these, this awesome tool. Um, I'm just gonna go into a table, and it says, hey, what sort of hash do you wanna create? And these are all the hashes that we can go ahead and create. Uh, in this example, it's NTLM hash that we wanna create. Um, the minimum length was three. Maximum length is four. Index, I'm not going to worry about. Chain length, I'm not going to worry about. The chain cap, I oh, will just take a dot off there because you'll see that the less of that is there. Um, the time that it takes to generate is a bit less. So if I add another zero onto that, it'll increase the time. Uh, it just means obviously how many counts of that actual chain will be created. So in the chain of, you know, however many values there are going to be, it's going to add an extra you know character on top of whatever it is so uh, that's why it's adding it um that's why it's creating that huge chain count um characteristic there um what character set are we creating so in this case we are doing a mixed alpha uh, let's just select like mixed alpha and how many tables i just want one table i don't care about having 10 different tables so it says hey in order to go create this rainbow table it's going to take me 41 minutes to create okay now if i didn't know what that complexity is let's say i'll do 1 to 20 and let's say i'll do mixed alpha for this example now you'll see that the probability of me cracking that is almost one is is no chance there's just too many possible combinations and it's never going to work and it's going to take me obviously just over an hour to to or over a thousand and a bit hours right um now if i knew what that is maybe let's do 19 to 20 uh and let's go benchmark that and see what that looks like once again there's it takes now obviously a lot harder to go and crack these creds because a higher character count there's more possibilities for me trying to even break that uh it's almost going to take you know a very very long time um you know where opposed if it might be three characters and three characters if we know what that is you know then we've got a hundred percent success rate and that's going to take 38 minutes to generate so lower passwords less secure <laughs> the longer the password length uh the more secure it's going to be um and i'm actually quite curious i'm going to go up to eight to nine and let's benchmark for that that's not looking right because okay so yeah so you get the idea of it right so mixed alpha Maybe if we change this to numeric, we might have a different, there we go. So a 97% success rate. So if we're not very specific on what cracking method we're gonna use, you know, if I do or, there's just so many possible combinations, we don't know what's gonna happen and what the outcome is, you know, it's, it's gonna be a lower chance. So in this case, let's do three to four. Now, for your sake, I've already created this rainbow table, um, so we don't have to wait half an hour for us to go ahead and actually do it. Um, I'm just going to find the directory where I've put it in, which should be in here. Regen, RDGen. There we go. So these are the tables that I've already created. Um, I've already sorted these rainbow tables. So by default, um, when I've created these two rainbow tables, if they're not sorted, so we have to have a sorted rainbow table for it to actually crack. If they're not sorted, it won't work, um, which is obviously some issues with you know, sorting those rainbow tables. While sorting it, they just want to have, you know, when we selected a rainbow table before, it had the chain count. Um, so you have a rainbow table after rainbow table after rainbow table, and then to have them organized into one table with the right format, which will be RT, and then we'll go ahead and use that one table, which has merged all the rainbow tables together um, into one sort of one single uh, table that we can go ahead and crack. So in this example, I did characters three to five, um, and that's fine, I did three to four, sorry, it was three to five. Uh, with the 40,000, 40, 400,000 sort of chain length. Um, not that we need to know and care about that, but just an FYI. Um, it might make sense that I actually go into the depth of what the chain length is, the the um, the chain length, the character set, and all that sort of stuff in a little bit more detail. I'll create a separate video for this. I think it's quite important that we obviously go into and understand how they actually get generated and how they actually work. Um, if you don't want it, um, that's cool. 
uh, you don't have to sort of, um, but for those people that maybe want it and sort of want to know more a little bit about it, uh, I'll also create that for you guys. So now that we have those two um, rainbow tables generated, um, I'm going to fire up our uh, rainbow crack and then we'll just go ahead and import the database. So the same database that we created and then we'll go ahead and just crack it and see how quick we can crack all those credentials. So I'm just going to run our crack GUI. So this is the graphical version of rainbow crack and we need two parameters in here for it to work. We'll need to import the, the SAM database, which is the database that we exported. So if I go into our um, command line, and let me, let me go back a directory to downloads, jump into FG dump. So you guys remember before when we did the, the dump of the database. So here's our dump. So it's just over 6,000 kilobytes. Um, and that's our, a dump of a database. So we need that dump, which will run the hashes that it wants to export them or import them into Rainbow Crack. And then it also needs the Rainbow Table as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and load these hashes. So load from NTLM hashes from PW dump file, which is what we've created. Um, I'm just going to go back one. So into FG dump is our folder and it says, hey, I need a PW dump file to go ahead and, you know, and do this. So let's upload that. And here you are. So um, there's two ways to view this. One is I can go do it in here. So I can go um, cat uh, 10, the cat, that should work, or it might be more. I think it's more 10, there we go, cool. So, what I've just done now, I said, hey, can you please show me more details about um, these actual, this database that I've exported? So over on the left-hand side, you'll see that we've got the administrator. By default, it's 500, which is just says, hey, it's an admin account, the default administrator account. Um, there's no password. So over here where the asterisks are, this is the actual LM hashes, which are undisclosed because they're not supported right now. To the right, these are the NTLM hashes for those passwords. So you can see right here that these are all the usernames associated with um, the, that Active Directory controller. So these are all the users inside there, um, which is saying, hey, you know, this user, Spay, whoever they are, or Chaz. So these are just usernames. Um, and here's the actual hash for the NTLM specific hash for that password. Okay, so you can see that the hash is here. No hash, or well, the LM hash, which is the older version, which is not supported. And then you'll see the actual NTLM hash just here. So all we're gonna do now is just verify this hash with the bazillion hashes that are in our table. So I can go online and just down, download, I've got rainbow tables that can do that, which will have you know, 400 gigs of hashes, um, you know, to be specific or to be you know, minimum 400 gig hashes. And then we'll just go ahead and compare these pre-computed hashes with, you know, the known hash. So if this is password two, for example, it's just gonna go through the rainbow table and say, hey, the 751E6D, is that password one? No, 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 no. And it'll just go down the whole rainbow table very, very quickly. And, and you'll see now when we do the demonstration on how just how quick it can be done. So back into rainbow crack, um, you see that the hash is here. So that's the NTLM hash. Um, over here, it hasn't found the password yet because we haven't cracked it. Um, plain text, don't worry about that, and the comment. So this is just the username within Active Directory. So right now there's no passwords, that's fine. There's over, you know, a few, maybe a couple of users in here. So I wanted to make this realistic, or as realistic as possible, so I've created a bunch of users. Now I'm just gonna import our rainbow table that we've generated, or well, I've generated uh, before doing this, this uh, demo, so it saves time, we don't have to worry about, um, going ahead and wasting too much time. Um, so I'm just gonna go back into, and I can't remember where I exported it. So it's gonna be fun. When I teach anyone being there, might be in ITGen. Okay, cool. Now, I don't know if this is just the setup. It's probably this one. Right. So the moment I open it now, once I open it, you should go ahead and automatically run. Um, if it works and if it's sorted, it'll go through and actually crack all the creds. So, finish reading data, uh, doesn't look like it's done anything. Well, there we go. 
So it looks like it's already started cracking some of those passwords. So it looks like all the hashes have been found for this specific user, uh, MILM. So the password for her was blah. Uh, Fumi, I, whatever. His password was 333. Now I've, I've actually did this as a demo because when I was cracking some um, accounts, the users that I've created are actual, some of them are real users that, you know, I've, encountered and when i was doing these sort of tests on the environment some of the passes that i found were actually this so i was doing some forensics work for a company not long ago and um, this password was the one that sort of surprised me because um, in the password hint and i kid you not in the password hint it had blah and i'm thinking holy shit like he, i'm at a i'm at a login screen and the password is the password hint is blah and other times, like I'm, I'm doing some sort of user awareness training and I see passwords underneath keyboards, or underneath the chairs, um, or sometimes underneath the mats. So some guys will have, you know those, um, when you have a, a sort of chair with the wheels underneath, you've got those mats underneath where people put on, so it doesn't like, so you can actually slide around. Some people actually hide information underneath that, you know, in, uh, in, little, um, in little sticky notes. So other times I've found, I've found a password that's got like, um, you know, the, uh, let me write it up for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. So sometimes I'll see the password like this and we'll have, you know, open um, lowercase, like the smaller bracket, and then we'll have blank, you know, and then thing. And sometimes I, I even try that as a password. I literally go, you know, blank. Um, other times I just press enter and it actually lets me through. So sometimes it's not even a password because of the, 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 the administrators don't even put or don't even think to configure a, a default policy on their um on the password policy. You know, and this password specifically for this user was just blah. And that was a password hint. So I'm like, okay, let me try blah. And once I actually passed it, I was like, holy shit, I'm actually I'm actually logged in as blah. And um so you see some of these passwords, these are actual passwords from, from a lot of these people. Uh this was definitely a password zero zero zero. Um, you know, and five four three two one um big yes you know and i thought i wanted to make this as realistic because people do um and this was an admin account that i found um uh, not too long ago it was uh they had some solar winds monitoring stuff and um he needed to create we needed to create an account for him so we just changed his password um and it looks like that you know the password character link was not set and he had entered that three letter character password in big and um, you know, and it was cracked, and you know, we went to his name and like update your security policy and all that sort of stuff. So, um, as you can see, that that now has cracked, um, you know, these passwords out of how many users in that sort of table. And that's what we want. We want to attack something, but we don't want to make it too hard. Now that we've got these permissions or these these passwords that are cracked, it makes our job a little bit easier now. That okay, well now that we have these credentials, can we try and elevate permissions? Can we try and escalate our access? That is that an admin account that we can potentially use and start pivoting? You know, can we have access to this James machine, for example, with password blah? You know, from here now it just starts going. Well, now I can have you know how many connections are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight connections. These potentially can be all persistent connections into the network. And, and it just takes these maybe a couple of users to then compromise more of the network or more of the enterprise and, and get a bigger foothold in the, in the, in the environment. So um, I hope you found this sort of a little bit beneficial, guys. Um, this is coming from the real world sort of things where I, I thought this would be a great demo to show you how easy some sort of the credential dumping is and sort of cracking those passwords. Um, if there's any questions while I'm going through this or if there's something that you want to know more about in more specifics, um, just, you know, just shoot me a message and let me know and I can create some video. I'm going to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you to sort of go through things uh, in more depth or in more time. Um, I'm happy to take out, you know, an hour of my time if I can just sit with you and, and obviously go through some stuff if you'd like. Uh, if you want to know things just at a high level, just let me know. Just, you know, just reach out and just tell me what you like and then I can go ahead and create more content. I will be obviously doing more content around it um, and obviously having more fun with it as well. So. We're going to go into the remote access side of things in just a moment. Um, I'm going to take a short break and then we'll just resume in just a few minutes. Okay.